Hello, you're watching CDZ, I'm the Retro Zoomer, and this is a companion video to the Floppy Quest. In this video, I'll be disassembling this Toshiba Satellite 1800 so it can be cleaned. This machine is the intended workhorse of the Floppy Project, so it's important that it's in as good a condition as possible. So this is the bag that I got it in. I took it apart a bit at work so I would know what screwdrivers I would need to steal, I mean borrow. And then it sat in this bag until I got a good enough camera and set up for filming. So you can see it came with an Ethernet cable. I had already taken the hard drive out. It came with this cute little Logitech mouse, which I really liked. You can see it's nice blue plastic. Here's the power cord, charging brick. It's a pretty thick thing, two-pronged. And then this would be just some bottom plates, the box that actually contains all the screws that I took out at work, because I didn't feel like putting it back together. Took most of the bottom plates out, you can see they are absolutely filthy. And then here she is, isn't she gorgeous? Plastic in really, really good condition. A couple of scrapes, a couple of scuffs, but other than that, it is not bad. I'm gonna get rid of the bag here. Throw that away. And then bring our star right back onto the table. You can see this is a Toshiba Satellite 1800. I'll put the full model in the description, I don't remember it off the top of my head. It opens with a hinge, and as you can see, keyboard well intact, screen, no damage, turns on, looks completely fine. It actually has a sticker that says, I believe, meant for Windows 2000 Professional and Windows ME, and that was originally what came installed on the computer, was Windows ME. As you'll see in a second when I flip it over, it has both a Windows ME and Windows XP uh, product sticker and code. In, uh, in the, this is uh, narrated after, so I'm kind of pointing at stuff. It has two sticks of RAM. Not, uh, don't remember off the top of my head exactly what size they are. I'll put all the full specs in the description. But it's good condition. Uh, this machine actually still boots to the OS. It was in use when I got it. I bought it from a farmer. So. I had no complaints or concerns about the condition this machine was in. It doesn't work without being plugged in, so the battery's off, but, you know, that's just what it is with machines of this age. It is about 20 years old, and the fact that it does seem to have all original parts is just great to me. As you can see, it does have here the little uh, modem card. I really love the care that went into this machine, because yes, they installed Windows XP, and then they took the Windows XP sticker with the with the code and taped it to the bottom so it wouldn't get lost. So now I have both the original product codes, activation codes for Windows ME and Windows XP. You can see I, I wasn't really sure what I was doing, I knew I would have to voice over this video just because of the recording space I was working in. Um, so I was just kind of making motions with my hand. You can see the back, just very standard ports for a computer of this era and this age. None of the ports are damaged that I could tell. You can see the hard drive slot there, the CD drive, that's the modem. And then we have the main reason I bought it, which is the beautiful little floppy drive there works. I've tested it since this video was, was recorded. And then we have the card slot, expansion card port, and you can kind of see some of the dirt, especially around the volume control knob. That thankfully was able to be cleaned out pretty good. You can see that's the fan, the fan slot and a little Kensington lock. You can see again the dirt in the fan slot. A lot of real Real nasty, nice dart in that fan slot. But there it is. Um, 
fabulous condition. So without further ado, I'm just gonna get started taking this apart. I decided to clean some of these bottom pieces before I started taking apart the laptop, just because I thought it would be pretty satisfying to do. As you can see, they were pretty dirty. They were just as dirty as the rest of the shell once I took the motherboard out. But thankfully, they cleaned up really well and didn't damage the plastic or any of the little stickers on the bottom at all. So now I turn the laptop, and that's just removing the battery. And then this is the modem removal, so I got the little modem jack, and then there were two screws actually holding the modem in, or the modem card in. One of the screws was under this little uh, bit of glass tape that was holding everything else down. Then there was this big, just ugly piece of something, some sticker residue that was pretty gross. I started trying to rub it and clean it with isopropyl, and that didn't really work well, so I started trying to scrape it. And it just wasn't saturated enough to actually properly scrape it too much. I got some of the top layer off. And I was able to pull that back, but then there was still a lot of just sticker residue left after that. So what I actually ended up doing was saturating one of these little, it's actually a gauze pad, in isopropyl alcohol. And I let that sit on there for, I want to say, three or four minutes. And then once it's had some time to soak, you can see it had kind of dried around the edges. The glue, the adhesive, had actually managed to soften quite a lot. So I just continued scrubbing and rubbing at that area with the gauze pad. And I did a little bit more scraping to just try to get some of the more tough sticker residue off. Didn't end up leaving that many gouges in the plastic. And the few I did leave were very unnoticeable, and I'd prefer that to the disgusting, gross sticker mess that was there. See, now it's nice and clean. Looks almost brand new. Again, I have no idea what that sticker was, but I think it was something original. But it just looked disgusting, so it needed to go. Then it's time to flip it over. Open her up, and now it's time to remove the top plate. So it has the multimedia buttons, and it's what holds in the keyboard. That had some little hinges on it that had to be popped out. And once those hinges were popped out, it could kind of just be snapped out of place, and then snapped back in place. You can see I had to get the other hinge on that side just to kind of loosen it. Just needed a little bit of leverage there. There were a few screws actually holding the keyboard in. There were two just short silver screws. And once those screws were removed, it was pretty easy to just kind of lift the keyboard up. It had some tabs on the bottom where it slotted into that bottom panel. Um, cut it out of the footage for some reason, but it was connected to the motherboard with a ribbon cable, so I just attached the ribbon cable from the motherboard. In order to get off the touchpad, or I suppose the what I'm calling the touchpad, and its little 
little daughter board, uh, the screws had to be removed from the bottom side. Then, in order to get off the fan plate, there was, looks like about four screws, three or four screws holding the fan plate, and then once the fan plate, yeah, four screws, once the fan plate was gone, then the actual fan could be removed, and that's the fan plus the heatsink. There are four screws holding the fan in. And the fan could be removed, and it was connected with a little cable to the motherboard, which was pretty easily removed. As you can see, it was very dirty. Then I had to remove the CPU, so I cleaned around the CPU a little bit. There's a little latch that I pushed, and then, this took me a while to figure out, actually, but you had to kind of nudge the screwdriver in there to pop the CPU. And then the CPU could be removed, so I was just showing it off. It's an Intel CPU, pretty common. I think it's a Celeron. Then here comes the CD-DVD drive. Not bad. Then I'm just removing some more screws from the bottom. It's kind of counting them out while looking at the actual technician's guide that I have for this computer. So once some of the bottom screws were removed, there were a few more on the top, and actually a few more, or not the top, the inside, a few more on the inside, and then a few on the back that actually had to be removed so that I could take the screen and this connected top plastic piece off. So you can see there I'm getting the screws from the back. I was using my screwdriver back there to get a little bit of leverage so I could kind of pull it up. I didn't manage to break anything, or managed not to break anything. And then eventually I was able to separate the screen and the top bit from the motherboard, which is still in the bottom bit. And then there is just some cleaning here because I felt like I wanted to do some cleaning. Uh, and I knew it would be very satisfying to clean the speakers here because they were probably, other than the fan, some of the filthiest parts of this computer were the speakers. So the speakers are both connected to some little daughter boards. So you can see the fan on the right, I've already disconnected it from the daughter board. And then the fan on the left, the connector into the daughter board is actually technically under it, so I didn't have access. But there's the daughter board for the one speaker, and also does the, as you can see, the hard drive connection. And there was just another little plastic bracket. And then here comes the left screen, or the left speaker, and the daughter board. So the speaker is connected to the daughter board, and then the daughter board is connected via ribbon cable to the motherboard. And then I also pulled out some auxiliary batteries. So here is me disconnecting the cables for the hard drive. Hard drive caddy. Actually, no, that's the floppy disk drive. Floppy disk drive disconnected. This, I believe, was the multimedia controller board. So all the little multimedia buttons at the top of the keyboard. So that had to be taken out, that and its little holder. And then this is just removing some more screws and these kind of like bolt things that were actually holding the motherboard into the bottom plastic piece. So once these screws and these little bolts were removed, I could just lift the motherboard up out of the bottom piece. And there we can see the CPU socket, some of the ports, and then the bottom much, much cleaner than the top. Almost no dust on the bottom, no dirt on the bottom. And now the laptop is all disassembled, so in the next video that I'll post, whenever I get around to editing it, will be the cleaning, and then there should be a third video after that which features reassembly, and then there will be a final video just taking a tour of the laptop, and probably a couple more I want to put windows 2000 or Windows ME on it, because it currently, as you could see based on the stickers, has Windows XP installed. And then after that, it will be ready to be my main workhorse for the floppy project. Thank you so much for watching my video. Uh, this is the first time I've really edited a video of this type or of this style, so I apologize for any roughness. 
I'll only be getting better. Thanks for watching.